Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon or good evening. Uh, welcome to this brand new YouTube channel and my first series where together we will be taking a cursory look at the absolutely wonderful world of public health. I really hope you'll spend some time on this journey with me and come to learn a thing or two about how this is one of the most important fields of healthcare. Uh, just to note, um, I am a nurse in training and my work is primarily educational, so uh, please consult a licensed professional for further guidance and information um, because I cannot provide answers to some questions or concerns due to my experience level. Just a disclaimer. Uh, so with that out of the way, my name is Fina and this is Reveal in Light. So to start us off on this video series, we have to ask ourselves this question. What is public health? And we have to receive an answer before we can dive deeper deeper into the facets and tenets that hold public or community health together. I'll be using both of those terms synonymously throughout this series. First and foremost, let's take a look at the definition of public health given by the Center for Disease Control or the CDC. Quote, public health is the science of protecting and improving the health of people and their communities. This work is achieved by promoting healthy lifestyles, researching disease and injury prevention, and detecting, preventing, and responding to infectious diseases. Overall, public health is concerned with protecting the health of entire populations. These populations can be as small as a local neighborhood or as big as an entire country or region of the world. Breaking down this paragraph into more bite-sized pieces, public health belongs to the study of healthcare, duh, concerning human beings and their physiological, psychological, spiritual, and social well-being, and maintaining and protecting that equilibrium from disease. I just want to note that health should be defined as not only the absence of disease as we uh, think of it most times, but holistic wellness in mind, body, and spirit. Public health is, at its base, preventative and protective of its target populace. Instead of traditional medicine, which focuses on the individual or a cohort, such as pediatrics focusing on people aged, you know, from births age zero to age 18, public health instead focuses its energy on serving large communities. Examples can include a state health department that serves a state's citizens, WIC, which is Women's, Infants, and Children's programs, CHIP, immunization programs for school children, and mobile clinics to offer contraceptives to people who can become pregnant. Public health is also inclusive of efforts ordinary citizens do. So, say, if a union is striking for safer conditions for its employees, as well as, in the case of a hospital, lower staff-to-patient ratios. And, uh, kind of to explain that, using a succinct example, instead of one nurse to eight patients, say, one nurse to four patients. This is an example of how grassroots organizing can help improve the quality of life of a wide net of individuals through the collective efforts of a motivated group or population. Furthermore, let's analyze the different duties a public health official does. Promotion of health lifestyles, or healthy lifestyles, my mistake, is something as simple as discouraging smoking and alcohol consumption during pregnancy via advertising and social media education. A huge part of public health is disease surveillance, and certain diseases need to be reported to a local, state, and federal health department. These diseases include TB, or tuberculosis, MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, etc. Injury prevention can happen at the state level, such as mandating seatbelt usage by law to mitigate car crash fatalities. Now that we know a bit more about community health, we need to ask ourselves an important question. Why should we care as lay people and as professionals? 
Well, public health promotes equity amongst people that would otherwise be minimized on a population level. Please note my use of the word equity instead of the word equality. Equity is the distribution of resources according to the needs of the person or group receiving the care. Not all people or groups require the same care. Therefore, giving them the same care is not ideal, though we should take the opportunity to examine who is receiving care and if it is adequate to the ones receiving it. Before jumping to the next topic, I would like once more to defer to the CDC and show you this quote from their website that speaks about health care disparities. Quote, Health disparities are preventable differences in the burden of disease, injury, and violence, or in opportunities to achieve optimal health experience by socially disadvantaged racial, ethnic, and other population groups and communities. Achieving health equity, eliminating disparities, and improving the health of all U.S. population groups are goals of public health. Access to clean drinking water, sanitation, and food can greatly impact a person's capacity to live a healthy lifestyle. If a person uh, who is, say, living in a food desert, which is an area where there is little access to low-cost healthy food options, they will be more likely to die of a preventable illness like cardiovascular disease than if they had greater access to nutritious options. However, Health literacy and social determinants of health also play a part in making these choices, both of which will be covered in future episodes. Anyway, from an economical standpoint, preventative care, a very large part of public health, can prevent unnecessary spending on costly tertiary procedures and acute care from untreated medical conditions. This is especially pertinent and important for those in the baby boomer age demographic. Baby boomers make up the majority of the U.S. population, and thus, they are the ones who are currently using the most amount of acute care, chronic care, and tertiary resources. And since most baby boomers use Medicare as their primary insurance, we would ideally like to test for or eliminate diseases and conditions that affect baby boomers before they become more and more serious, like hepatitis C and HIV. Harm reduction is a huge part of community health and healthcare in general. I will cover this topic more thoroughly in upcoming videos, but in brief, I will touch on the study of epidemiology. Epidemiology, in essence, is the study and practice of trying to find and trace the origin and paths of a disease, usually a communicable slash infectious one. Epidemiology ties back to disease surveillance, which I mentioned earlier. Epidemiology tries to find trends amongst the data present, presented to them during epidemiological events, like a pandemic. <laughs> Very topical, right? To better serve the community through public health measures. When an outbreak of, um, to use a pertinent example, say Listeria in cookie dough occurs, epidemiologists at the local, state, or federal level all work in concert with local healthcare authorities to determine the cause, spread, reservoir, and containment needed to eliminate or mitigate the outbreak. And by the way, that example is actually something I encountered once when I went to my local Cold Stone Creamery. They weren't selling any ice cream that had cookie dough in it because there was Listeria in it. Public health, above all, speaks to increase a population or a community's quality of life via improving health outcomes. I would like to conclude this video by quoting the American Public Health Association in an effort to summarize what we've discussed today. Quote, From conducting scientific research to educating about health, people in the field of public health work to assure the conditions in which people can be healthy. That can mean vaccinating children and adults to prevent the spread of disease, or educating people about the risks of alcohol and tobacco. Public health sets safety standards to protect workers and develops social nutrition programs to ensure kids have access to healthy food. Public health works to track disease outbreaks, prevent injuries, and shed light on why some of us are more likely to suffer from poor health than others. The many facets of public health include speaking out for laws that promote smoke-free indoor air and seatbelts spreading the word about ways to stay healthy and giving science-based solutions to problems. 
Public health saves money, improves our quality of life, helps children thrive, and reduces human suffering. I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Let's Learn Public Health. It's been a pleasure learning with you. Our next topic will further elucidate common public health issues that our communities face every day. My name is Vina, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!